Today, we're going to look at everyday objects that you didn't realize had a purpose. So this is probably going to blow your mind. So buckle up. Here we go. All right, so up first, we have the pom-poms on beanies. They might look cute and fluffy now, but they had an actual function before. French sailors used to wear hats with pom-poms so that they wouldn't hurt their heads on the ceilings of the ship during rough weather. It would just act as a pillow on top of their head. Why didn't they just lay down? Like, if you're hitting turbulence, why are you standing up? And is that small ball of cotton even enough to absorb the shock? Probably not. I'm sure a lot of them got concussions and they didn't even realize it. Let me try this. Ow. That clearly doesn't work. A lot of doorknobs are made out of brass because it destroys bacteria, so these types of doorknobs are essentially germ-proof. Perfect in a household with lots of kids. Is that how that works? So all brass instruments are germ-proof, so why do all the saxophone players still bring that thing around to wipe it? This can't be the case. I don't believe that. Let's Google it. Okay, they're antimicrobial. I was wrong. For once. For twice. Okay, moving on. You can use your screwdrivers as wrenches as well. A lot of screwdrivers can be easily slid through a wrench and are used to create more torque. This feature is especially helpful at complicated heights and angles. You know what? That's good to know. Because sometimes it is difficult if you have to like wedge your hand somewhere and you have like a screwdriver and your wrist is too big. Let's say you work out a bit too much. It's nice to know that you could just have it proxy as a wrench. Okay. All right, number eight, the tiny buttons on your jeans, they're known as rivets, and they're the silent heroes that make your pants last longer. They're placed in the areas that are most likely to tear from movement or strain and help hold the fabric together. Okay, well right now I am not wearing jeans, but next time I put jeans on, I'll be sure to thank that little button. All right, so moving on, we have the little arrow-like symbol on the gas gauge. It indicates precisely which side your gas tank is on. If the arrow is pointing left, look at the filler cap there. If it's on the right, you know what to do. So I was told this a long time ago when I first started driving, about a decade ago, because I'm an old man. And ever since then, I've never committed to memory what side my gas gauge is on. So I always just look at that arrow and it's 100% certain every single time. It's like magic. All right, so we have the holes in pen caps. Some people can't help but chew the caps of their pens. Tip, don't do this. I wasn't going to, I don't use pens. I type on my keyboard. However, it's a potential health hazard because you might swallow it and choke. The holes in the caps allow people to breathe in case that happens. Ah, because I bet a lot of small kids chew on it and swallow it, and then it gets lodged in their throats, and they're like, oh, mommy, I can't breathe because I have a pen cap in my throat. But meanwhile, they're actually okay because Bic decided to be altruistic and help people out. Remember that drawer under your oven, the one where you keep your kitchen gear that doesn't belong anywhere else? It's not actually designed for that. It's designed to keep your food warm until you're ready to serve it. I knew that only because I made a video on it. Let's just display it right here. It's kind of a dumb place to warm your food. I could just put it on the warming function and then just put it into the oven. So that's kind of obsolete and outdated at this point. Also, why would I put my food essentially on the ground? The bacteria are going to jump on it as I'm beginning to serve it. The hole at the top of a lollipop stick, I've never seen that. I don't know what that's for. I guess they're going to tell me right here, but I don't even want to read it because I've never seen that. Therefore, it's not real. Is the earth flat? I don't know. I've never seen it. Am I a flat earther? I don't know. I've never actually said it to you guys. I'm not. Okay, moving on. The small holes on locks. They help drain water from locks, which stop it from rusting and clogging up with the gunk. You can also use the hole to oil the lock's inner mechanism and keep it in tip-top shape. This one is particularly interesting because as a locksmith, I always thought that that was how you hacked locks. Like if somebody had to get into a lock, that you put like a little bobby pin in there to finesse it. I didn't realize it had a purpose that's not even analogous to the lock itself. So, okay. The number 57 on a Heinz ketchup bottle. Apparently the embossed number is what the company spokesperson calls a soft spot. All you need to do is apply a firm tap where the bottle narrows and the ketchup will come out easier. So you mean to tell me that you're not supposed to just do this until gravity itself explodes and Newton and Einstein and all those scientists roll over in their grave. Really all I have to do is just apply a 45 degree angle and give it a little love tap on the 57. Honestly, I knew that though. That used to be like a party trick that I would do. Not at parties, but at like subways, sub shops, etc. Double colored erasers. I've never seen that in my life. I usually use like the pink ones. So the different colored sides are used to erase marks made by different pencils on different types of paper. Oh, so it's not actually for pen. So the pink and orange side is used for light grades of paper and light pencil, and the blue is meant for grainier, tougher paper and darker marks. All right, well, the average age of somebody who regularly uses an eraser is probably seven years old, so I doubt that they're able to discern between tough, grainy paper and then light paper. I'm honestly kind of dumb. Sorry. The ridges on the F and J keys on the keyboard. Yes, I have those. 
They help your fingers find their location on the keyboard. This way you can type without having to glance down much easier. So they serve as the optimal starting point for typing. And I know this because one time I tried to take a typing test, like a whole curriculum, and I opted out after one hour because I thought, why don't I just look down? Why do I have to type without looking when I have eyes? Two of them, in fact, right? This picture looks like a joke, but I guess we'll read it. The holes in the handles of utensils. Sure, they're great when you want to hang your pan or pot on a wall, but they're also perfect for holding spoons and ladles while cooking. That way, you don't get your kitchen counter messy. You know what you're going to get messy? You. Because I guarantee you, every single time you do this, it's going to fall down. It's probably going to hit you on the shirt, and you're going to have tomato sauce. You're going to say, Mamma mia, what's on my shirt? Just put it down on the counter, and then just clean the counter afterwards. Why would you risk this? And what if it falls into the soup? Double bad, especially if it's boiling water. So don't do that. All right, so that little hole in your airplane window actually has two purposes. So first, it allows airflow through to keep from too much pressure building inside the cabin and busting the window as it rises in altitude. And secondly, it keeps the windows from fogging up with all the warm breath of the passengers. Who are you to say that I have warm breath? I have cold breath because I use TheraBreath. Just insert it right here. I've actually never noticed these on a plane. I saw a video from Hank Green. Does that sound familiar? I think he made a TikTok where he explained the two purposes. I don't think these were the two purposes, so maybe he was wrong. I don't even know if that's his name. Maybe I just said somebody random, like some dictator in Cuba. But anyways, I guess that's good to know. Okay, thank you. The brushes on the sides of escalators aren't for polishing your shoes. Yes, they are. They're actually a safety feature. One of the biggest reasons for escalator mishaps is people getting their clothes and bags stuck in them. And so these nylon bristles play with your mind and make you keep your feet away from the escalator skirt panels, hence avoiding accidents. Okay, but you just admitted that people purposefully put their feet on them to brush your shoes. So its intended purpose actually backfired and now people are more drawn to it. I would call that a design fail, which I might actually make a video on soon, so subscribe. The little slot at the end of measuring tape. Most measuring tapes come with a metal stub with a small slot on the end. In case all your hands are full, hang the slot on a nail for a measurement. Everybody's known this, right? If you've ever done like a door and you just put it on like the ridge on top of the door and then you just let it collapse down. Am I the only one who knew that? Home improvement, Tim Allen type vibes over here. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so that teeny tiny pocket, they call it the fifth pocket, I believe. It was originally meant to tuck in a hand watch. Nobody has hand watches anymore, so this is obsolete. Nowadays, I think people just put their fingers in it and they act like they're tough. They put like a toothpick in their mouth and they're just like leaning against a wall and they're like, hey, what's up? You know anybody here? Give me five bucks or else you can't come in. Okay, so the tab you find on aluminum cans is actually meant to be a straw holder. The amount of people who are doing this? Also, has anybody ever cut their lip when drinking from an aluminum can? It used to be a very big thing. It's like, oh, be careful. Like, don't put your lip directly on it. I've never cut my lip and I've been drinking a lot. Not like that, you know what I mean? But I think that's the straw industry infiltrating our minds and making us think that we need straws when in reality, we could just do this, right? The standard issue Chinese takeout box is more than just a box. They actually have a dual purpose when taken apart. You don't have to dig out the contents from the bowl. It actually folds open like a plate. Would you look at that? Yeah, but I don't eat Chinese food too often. And when I do, it's dim sum. So it's not generally like low main that I have to like open up onto a platter. But if I ever have a kick when I'm just into Chinese food, I will be sure to remember this. So thank you, bestlifeonline.com. Very cool. Hole and spaghetti spoon. Any cook worth their salt will tell you that exactly one serving of pasta fits neatly into the hole in your spaghetti serving spoon. That only applies to spaghetti. So you mean the entire spoon industry adheres to a single pasta when there's probably thousands of types of pasta. I find that hard to believe. Also, one serving for me is not the same for you as it is for Shaq, as it is for Asbula. I was thinking of a small person. That works actually. So unless you're telling me a pound of pasta fits comfortably within that hole, I don't believe you. The dot beside the iPhone camera, that's flash, isn't it? For those of you who consider yourselves masters of the iPhone selfie, then you might have wondered about that little dot between the camera and the flash. Okay, well, I'm wrong there. Well, as it turns out, the dot is actually a tiny microphone used to record audio when users film videos with the reverse camera. Okay, my question is why don't they just use the normal microphone on the phone, like the one that you talk into because it's a phone? Why do you need an additional one to capture voice? Somebody with a bigger brain than me, can you please explain this one? Most childproof prescription bottles can be altered. The majority of plastic medicine bottles have childproof lids. Still, not many people have knowledge that all's required is to turn them upside down and they're no longer childproof. What? 
I literally just spent 10 minutes looking for one of these bottles and I can't find it. So again, if somebody has one, can you please let me know in the comment section? And that's it. I think I learned something today. I hope you did too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Watch this video and this video if you want to see more content. Shout out to these two people for subscribing to me on YouTube and I will see you later. Peace.